So now we're going to look at two concepts for post conditions that we can set up. I've modified our rename method here to take into account when we might be doing some additional processing when we do a rename. So in this case, I've added a check to a method called can save data. And if that returns false, if we can't save data, then it's going to throw an invalid data exception. And the exception that it's throwing here really isn't important. The idea that's important is that it's throwing an exception. And this might be something that you would use in a case where maybe you're saving some data to a database or you're doing some other kind of processing after you've made some kind of change to your class. So there's a lot of instances where we might throw an exception. Well, when we throw an exception, we don't necessarily want the change to occur, or we might have a different post condition than what we originally had. So you can see our first post condition. We had checked to make sure that the name was not null or white space. But if we throw an exception because we couldn't save the data, we probably don't actually want to have the name changed because maybe these things have to happen together. Maybe we don't want to change the name of our person unless we're actually able to save that data to wherever we're saving that data. So we can set up a special contract that's going to be conditional on a particular exception being thrown. So we can do a contract.insures on throw and we specify the type of exception. So if we say an invalid data exception here, then what we can do is we can say that if an invalid data exception is thrown, then whatever's in here needs to be true. And what we want to check in this case is that the original value of this dot name for person, this person's name field, is still equal to what it originally was, that it's not equal to this new one. So we can use another concept here. We can use contract dot old value. And what we can pass in here is the thing that we want to get the old value of. So we're going to do this dot name. And we're going to say that the old value of this dot name should be equal to this dot name. Now, this is another one of those things where this looks a little bit strange here, because of course, this dot name equals this dot name. But we're using this contract old value. And remember, we're going to be using a binary rewriter that's going to rewrite our code here. So even though it looks like this can't possibly work, the rewriter is going to rewrite this code so that it's going to capture this value. Because when it sees this contract.old value and this dot name in here, it's going to know that I need to capture this value before it changes when this method first starts. And then I'll check it at the end. And so this is actually really neat because it gives you a lot of power. And you can use this old value with a regular insurance contract. You can use this anywhere that you want to check a post condition and make and check against what an original value was before your method started executing. So combining these two together, we can actually check to make sure that if we can't save data, if we throw this exception, that the name doesn't change. But you can see here that the name is actually changing. So if we go ahead and run this, what you're going to see now is that this post condition is failing. And it's a little bit hard to read this, but we get our exception here. And you can see post condition failed after throwing an exception. So we got this invalid data exception, but we failed on this post condition of contract old value equaling or contract old value of this dot name equaling this dot name that didn't happen because we actually changed it. So this value of name changed because we changed it here. So let's do something that's a little bit of a roundabout way of solving this. Before we change the name, let's go ahead and store it. So let's say old name is equal to this dot name. So then we're going to change the name. And then down here, if we fail, before we throw our exception, let's go ahead and set this dot name equal to the old name. So we're going to set it back. So it effectively has not changed. Now, if we run this, we're still going to get an exception thrown, 
because we're throwing this invalid data exception here, but you can see that we aren't failing that contract, that post condition validation, because that post condition was true. We met this condition, the old value of this dot name was equal to this dot name. So let's take a look at this in the decompiler. So I'm going to go into our person class here. And you can see we've got quite a bit of interesting stuff going on here. A lot more code than before because this is getting a little bit more complicated here. So our rename method now, you can see that we have this str1 and we are first going to do our requires. Then we have this try and we're going to set str1 equal to this name. So this is where we're getting our old value. We'll catch any exceptions that are thrown here. And if the exception were null, we'd throw. Then we have this str2, and that's equal to this dot name. And we've lost the variable name here, but this is actually our old name. Then we actually do our assignment, so this dot name is equal to name. And then we check if we can save the data, and we, if we can't save the data, we set it back. This is our old value. This was our code here. And then in our else, you can see that we're hitting this ensures here. And then with this try that we had here, this outer try, we have a catch. And for this invalid data exception, that's where we're gonna call this ensures on throw. And it's gonna check this value of str1 equaling the final this dot name. So it looks like magic when you don't see the decompiled code. But when you look at this, it makes a lot of sense what it's doing. The code contracts is basically just capturing this value ahead of time and then checking it at the end in a catch for that exception. So now you can really start to see the value of using code contracts and what the code contracts rewriter is actually doing for you.